Marie Curie. The person we now know as Marie Curie was born Maria Sklodowska in 1867 in the then Russian-occupied Poland. Her parents and four older siblings called her Manya. The late 1800s was not a great time for Poland. Manya's father, who was a physics and maths teacher, and her mother, who was the headmistress of a school, were discriminated against because of their support of Poland's independence. But despite their struggles, Manya and her siblings were given a very good education. Universities at that time did not admit women, so Manya and her sister Bronislava continued their studies by attending classes at the Flying University. This was an illegal underground education movement in Warsaw. When Bronislava moved to Paris to study at the famous University of Paris, La Sorbonne, Manya supported her by working as a governess for three years. In her spare time, she secretly taught poor children to read, which was against the law. Finally, in 1891, it was Manya's turn to attend La Sorbonne. Here she thrived and earned degrees in physics and chemistry. She also changed her name to Mari to be better accepted in her new country. Here she met another scientist, Pierre Curie, and together they set about experimenting with radioactive elements. Mari and Pierre fell in love. They were married in 1895 and had two daughters, Irene and Eve. The young family hit hard times financially, but that didn't stop their experiments. To make ends meet, they taught at the university during the day and at night they made important scientific discoveries such as showing that radiation came from the atom itself rather than an interaction between molecules as was previously thought. The so-called laboratory where they conducted their work was probably not the clean and tidy space that most people visualise. German chemist Wilhelm Oswald described their laboratory as a cross between a stable and a potato shed. In 1903, the year that Mary became the first doctor of physics at La Sorbonne, the Curie's hard work studying radiation paid off. They were awarded the prestigious Nobel Prize in Physics, which they shared with fellow physicist Henri Becquerel. Mary was the first woman to win the Nobel. But then tragedy struck. Pierre was killed when he was accidentally caught under a horse-drawn wagon. Mary was devastated. Nevertheless, she continued the work they had started and took over Pierre's chair and professorship at the University of Paris. With a grant from an American philanthropist, she began the construction on the Curie Pavilion, a radioactive laboratory which was a joint initiative of the University of Paris and the Pasteur Institute. Although Marie Curie was a busy scientist and teacher, she found time to run a cooperative school with a group of parents who were dissatisfied with the French educational system. Each family, which included artists, historians, scientists and other academics, took turns teaching. While her public image was not a positive one in France, Curie was celebrated internationally. In 1911, she was rejected as a member of the French Academy of Sciences. But that same year, she won her second Nobel Prize, this time in chemistry, for the discovery of two new elements, polonium and radium. She is still the only person to have won two Nobels in two different sciences. She named polonium after her home country, Poland. Radium was named for the rays it emitted. She had to crystallise a tonne of the ore pitch blend to separate just one-tenth of a gram of radium chloride. Curie finally accomplished her life goal in August of 1914. This was to finish the construction of the Radium Institute. Here, radioactivity could be developed and studied. Unfortunately, the Institute's work would be put on hold by the oncoming war. Bombs fell on Paris less than a month later. When World War I broke out, the government asked for donations of gold and silver. Curie offered both her and Pierre's Nobel Prizes to be melted down, but the offer was declined by the French National Bank. Instead, 
she used most of her Nobel Prize money to buy war bonds. The Red Cross appointed Mary as head of the radiological service, where she helped to teach healthcare providers in the latest techniques. She convinced rich acquaintances to donate cars. She then convinced mechanics to turn the cars into 20 vans that would become portable x-ray stations. After giving herself a crash course in anatomy and learning how to drive, she and her 17-year-old daughter Irene set out to attend to the wounded soldiers. The vans became known as Petite Curies. Along with an additional 200 stationary units, over 1 million injured soldiers were diagnosed and treated. Curie was the first to treat diseased tissue with radiation, using techniques that would lead to what we now know as radiation therapy. Despite her selfless war efforts, Curie, who was Polish-born and a woman in a male-dominated field, was not awarded with a Legion of Honour from the French government until some time after the war, when it became clear that Marie Curie was internationally respected and honoured. However, she turned down the medal. Albert Einstein was a big fan and a good friend to Marie, but many of her French male colleagues continued to treat her with great disdain. While Marie never received significant personal gain from her work, with help from Claudius Rego, she did succeed in creating the Curie Foundation. The Curie Foundation is a non-profit organisation that raised funding for the Radium Institute with a particular focus on healing applications such as treatments combining surgery and radiation therapy to treat cancer. Today, Institut Curie is one of the leading medical, biological and biophysical research centres in the world. Marie Curie also created an international standard measurement for radioactive emissions. This is called the Curie. Unfortunately, the very harmful effects of radiation were unknown at that time, and Mary suffered greatly with ill health brought on by her exposure. She died in 1934 at the age of 66. Sixty years after her death, the ashes of Marie and Pierre Curie were exhumed and reinterred at the famous French Pantheon. To this day, Marie Curie is the only woman in the Pantheon honoured for her own achievements.